Horus in chance, home Suji BX, and this is why are modern fighters slower, fighter jets slower than 1960s? Is not what you think. Because of global warming, air becomes thicker, carbon dioxide, you know. No, obviously that's not the case. I don't know, I didn't know that was a thing. Is it, are they slower? How are, how are they slower? I mean, I get it, like there were things in like, you know, in Cold War, right? 1960s, I don't know, like. Okay. But I think there was the same speed, right? I mean, Mark II around it. I don't know. I don't know. Blackbird, I think, was like faster a lot. But then again, there was no need for uh, Blackbird nowadays. But there's also like Blackbird 2, which will have even higher speed. I don't know. F-15s can go much uh, higher speeds, but so can F-22. I don't think F-22 can go fast as F-15, right? F-15 like 2.5 plus or something. But F-22s can go 2.2, if I remember correctly. Right? Yeah. So I don't know there was many, that much of a difference, but alright. I remember watching a video about like cars, like why cars are slower compared to the back then. And they saw something like McLaren F1 and certain hatchbacks isn't that. And they showed like that's not really true. Uh, these other modern cars can achieve certain speed faster than them, accelerate faster and they're more nimble, agile. I don't know, there might be some like something like that here, who the fuck knows. But it's gonna be interesting, let's watch it. Remember people, like my and phone, subscribe, so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. I've been watching these military style videos a lot. Uh, equipments mostly, uh, you know, I'm an engineer, so I like to know about engineering things a lot. Uh, so yeah, planes, jets, tanks, videos like this, <clears throat> which obviously will technically will explain us why there's a difference. <clears throat> This is my channel, not what you think. Great channel. I liked his video about where he physically went to a, a you know amphibious boat and did all the thing. I guess he's like near three million subscribers, so he's big enough where he can get certain access like that, which is awesome. I hope he does like aircraft carrier and things like that. It would be fun. And yeah, let's watch it. Which can fly faster? A Vietnam War era F-4 Phantom or a 21st century F-35 Lightning II? It's indeed the F-4 Phantom, which has a top speed of Mach 2.2 compared to... What? It's indeed the F-4 Phantom F or a 21st century F-35 Lightning II. It's indeed the F-4 Phantom, which has a top speed of Mach 2.2 compared That's to the F-35 Lightning with a top speed of Mach 1.6. The Phantom can go 450 miles per hour faster. And this is not some exception. Fighter jets have not gotten faster in the past 50 years. And in some cases, they have slowed down. Counterintuitive on the surface, but it all makes sense if you're high. Like a pilot, because it's not what you think. Is, <laughs> if you're high. All right. Is that fair though? Can you compare F4 with F35? F35 is multi-role jet with like, it's not supposed to go that fast. It's like single jet thing, right? Uh, single, I don't know, yeah. While F22 has twin jets, right? Uh, like F-15 and I'm guessing F-4 and that can go 2.2. I get, I get it like F-22 is not really 21st century uh, plane, it's like older. But then again, that's how things goes when you talk about jets, tanks and things like that. It takes a long time. Only newer thing is F-35, but then again, they're making NGAD, next generation air, air dominance. It probably go as fast as F-22 or faster. So it just, you know, yeah. It just, this just happened to be the only uh, jet of uh, 21st century F-35. But its role is different. It's not air dominance, so it doesn't have to go that fast if you need it, right? It's like multi-purpose. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure NGAD will go like 2.2. I bet they'll make it go 2.5 if they can. Because that's what you're supposed to do. It will, have, it will be probably twin jet and things like that. I don't know. Military aircraft Son of Blackbird, that's going to be really fast. For reconnaissance and observation. But almost immediately, enemy pilots began to attack each other with handguns and grenades. Not surprisingly, the advantages implicit in having high top speeds were quite clear. The faster aircraft could always attack or disengage from the slower one. The maximum speed of early World War I aircraft... Anybody who done drive-by knows that, the speed helps. <laughs> ...average at approximately 110 miles per hour. And by the end of the war, their speeds were up to 140 miles per hour. Just so you can appreciate what a significant factor aircraft speed was back in those days, when the British came out with the de Havilland Mosquito Bomber in 1940, the Royal Air Force didn't even put guns on the aircraft, because it could cruise at such a high speed 
that was essentially immune against all of Luftwaffe's fighters. But it was during the Korean War, where jet aircraft were employed extensively for the first time. The maximum speeds of the CT-133 and MiG-15 were near Mach 0.9. Their best cruise speeds were also near Mach 0.9, and quite frequently, these aircraft flew at their maximum speeds. The desire for speed continued after the Korean War. Around the same time, jet engines with operational afterburners became available whoa, 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 and the supersonic F-100 led in the era of Century Series fighters. The name Century Series stems from these fighters' designation numbers, which started at 100. The Europeans and Russians also developed supersonic aircraft of their own, like the Super Mister B-2, Mirage 3, Lightning P-1, and MiG-19 and MiG-21. But these supersonic fighters had a totally new characteristic which had not been encountered previously. What was that? The subsonic fighter... Wait a minute, so... Why was that a rocket trying to propel it and then discard, discarded the rocket? What was that? You need that to fly? Is that what was the point? I'm guessing they're trying to like, you know, like, launch fast as they can so they don't need a runway or something. That was the case? ...had a maximum speed that was very close to their best cruise speed. But supersonic aircraft had a maximum speed that was 50 to 100% greater than their best cruise speed because of afterburners. So hitting Mach 2 almost became a requirement. The Mach 2.8 speed of MiG-25 became the reason for justifying the need for a new fighter to the US Congress in 1968 to 1970. But this is where intuition meets reality. The Vietnam War went on for 20 years. During that conflict, both the US Air Force and Navy used various models of the F-4 Phantom while the other side flew the MiG-21. Wait a minute, I'm pretty sure MiG-25 didn't do 2.8. They thought that it did, or, or you know, when it did, it did very specific times or something, right? The Foxbat one, where they introduced F-15 to answer it, right? Yeah, I don't know. Once, both of which had maximum speeds of Mach 2.2. But here is where things get interesting. Military analysts reviewed the flight data of more than 100,000 sorties flown by the Mach 2.2 American fighter bombers over North Vietnam. How many hours of flight combat time do you think was recorded at Mach 2.2? Or Mach 2 less. or even Mach 1.8? The answer is zero. Yeah. Not even one second of combat Why would they do was that? flown at those speeds. A few minutes were flown at Mach 1.4, and remarkably few hours were flown at or above Mach 1.2. Remember, this is out of over 100,000 sorties over 20 years. Basically going to Mach 2.4 or 2.2, whatever, it's like hitting nitrous oxide in your car. Basically something like that. If you don't need it, why would you do that? I'm pretty sure like plane's gonna rattle and everything, it's gonna be scary time. Right, like, uh, do you have the balls to take your cars to like its limit? Your car can go, let's say, 140 miles per hour. Are you going to do that? Right? Maybe you can in the modern cars, but let's say, like, cars are 20 years old, like, car from 2000 or something. I don't know. So, it's something like that. Why would they do that? I knew that fact. <clears throat> A lot of people told me in certain videos, like, they, they never do those speeds. Like, okay. Usually 1.2, 1.4. That's where they we mark one and around, I guess. So, what was going on in combat that caused top speeds to remain completely unutilized? Turn rate is a vital parameter when comparing air-to-air -air combat capabilities of different aircraft. Yeah, point the 8 to 1.2 is the, the range, more right? an aircraft can change its heading. And being more maneuverable is desirable when you're chasing or are being chased. Because of this, pilots typically flew their aircraft at a speed that allowed for maximum turn rate. But maximizing the turn rate will inevitably drive down the speed to about Mach 0.7 until an aircraft can be designed with its turn rate maximized in the supersonic range, air-to-air -air combat will occur at subsonic speeds. Now you might be thinking, having a top speed of Mach 2.2 at least allows the aircraft to get to the combat zone quicker, and then it can slow down to engage. And that's true, but not so fast. I mean, fuel would the be empty, wouldn't it? The maximum distance an airplane can travel from its base to accomplish an objective and return is known as combat radius or combat range. 
Even when flying into the combat zone, supersonic speed is rarely advantageous. That's because flying supersonic consumes a lot of fuel. Northrop studied a multitude. Yeah, imagine like you know Top Gun Maverick music playing in the background, right? Uh, I forgot what is it? Danger Zone, right? Danger Zone. That's the play. <laughs> Just like. Mark 2.2, I'm gonna get there. Oh my god, fuel is out. And just like suddenly engine turns off and your enemy just shoots you down. Because you're just a falling object at that point. ...of intercept cases and found that speeds above Mark 1.1 were almost never helpful because they severely reduced the combat range. For example, for an F4 Phantom II, increasing the runout speed from subsonic to Mark 1.5 reduces its combat range by a whopping 70%. Damn. But aside from turn rate and combat radius, both of which discourage supersonic flights, there are other factors that diminish the significance of supersonic capability. During World War I and World War II, one of the advantages of high top speeds was escaping enemy fire. But introduction of modern air-to-air -air and surface-to-air guided missiles changed all that. For example, the American AIM-120 air-to-air missile, which entered service in 1991, has a top speed of Mach 4. And some variations of the Russian S-300 missile have a top speed of Mach 7, more than twice as fast as the aircraft that is designed to shoot down. You can run but you can't hide doesn't apply here. In fact, the very opposite is true. As it became clear that combat aircraft are not going to be able to defeat an air defense system simply by the virtue of speed, the strategy changed. You can't run, but you can hide. How about not getting detected in the first place? This emphasis on stealth further reduced the importance of speed. That's because supersonic speeds go hand in hand with increased heat signature of the aircraft. The use of afterburners, as well as the aircraft body heating up due to increased air resistance at supersonic speeds, make it easier for infrared sensors to detect the aircraft. This is why the maximum sustained speed of the F-22 Raptor was actually reduced from Mach 1.8 to Mach 1.6 to reduce the heat load on the leading edge of the composite wing and thus improving stealth. Mm. The original utility of military aircraft was reconnaissance, flying over, taking pictures and returning to base. Compared to those days, the imagery technology available today is far superior, but requires more space than what can fit inside an SR-71 fuselage. The technological advancements in satellite and UAVs have proven more effective for imagery reconnaissance, which are alternatives to supersonic reconnaissance aircraft. Designing an aircraft. Yeah, but satellite is very limited, right? It can't cover everything you want it to cover. And other drone things can also be limited. That's the reason why they're going with SR-72 now. And obviously, like, growing tensions around the world, they're definitely going to, like, you know, speed that up. Like, fuck it, let's just, like, make that one faster. I don't know. ...that can handle supersonic speeds adds significant design complexities that need to be addressed. The higher the top speed, the more complicated things get. The need for complex air intakes to slow down the airflow to subsonic speeds adds weight. The need for high-powered, low-bypass engines usually means lower fuel efficiency. But these imposed changes... It's not just fuel efficiency, right? Like, you know, when they were making, let's say, Bugatti Veyron, right? It had a 1,000 uh, horsepower, right? And they needed to, uh, I don't know, what, 15 miles per hour? It was like... 240 to 267 that's what they, they just needed 17 miles per hour or something like that right they had to put like 200 horsepower more just to achieve that because once you go at certain speed right it's uh, air starts to become thicker and thicker the more thicker the air the you know it will feel thicker it won't be thicker but because of the, those speeds it will feel thicker it's like riding through soup as one of the engineers said right so imagine at this speed mark 1.6 from going from Mark 1.6 to, I'm guessing, just Mark 1.8 or even Mark 2, that would be an insane level of power you would need just to cut through all those air. Going even more than that. So, of course, it just empties the fuel just like that, right? And all, like the newer technologies with stealth and just like more agility, computers basically, F-22's whole strong point is like fly-by-wires and computers. It just, 
you know, corrects things itself. So you can be even insanely agile. Why do you need to run faster? And I think speed is still going to be a factor. There will be planes that is just like tailored for speed, even for air dominance thing. But mostly it's just going to be agility and stealth, I guess. Changes that enable those top speeds negatively impact aircraft performance in high subsonic speeds. And going back to that study of the 100,000 sorties during the Vietnam War, the subsonic range is where these aircraft are mostly operating in. An aircraft like the F-35 has a top speed of Mach 1.6, but it can carry more missiles, is stealth, and has a bigger combat range. Compared to a fighter like F-104, which had a top speed of over Mach 2, but suffered from a smaller combat range and could carry less armament. The new fighters are designed for marathons and not sprints. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's not completely, I don't know, either it's this or that. It's either black or white. It's just like, I don't know. It's not like modern fighters are slower. They are going to be faster modern jets. There's a reason why they're still keeping F-15s, which can go much faster. And they're just loading it up, right? If they were to like stop using F-15, they would have to make another plane that is just like that. Because there's always going to be scenarios where you'll need faster jets. But because of like stealth and more like agile, you know, jets, you don't need to be as fast. And it's just the data, right? These jets become much, uh, you know, stronger around 1960s. Since then, you have like seven decades of data where people realize, wait a minute, nobody goes to that speed anyway. So most of the planes are going to make it slow. But there will be planes that goes over Mark II, right? Once they, you know, like, they say, like, you know, screw F-15, let's make newer one. They will make something that goes over Mark II because there's a place for that. But yeah, and newer technologies and, new, you know, computers, like, correcting things will make sure that even at higher speeds, planes can, like, be agile, can turn better with better uh, material science. You could basically make something like that, right? It will just be... Higher speeds and same agility, that would be the thing to achieve in the future. All right, well, uh, this was why are modern fighters jets slower than 1960s, but I don't know what you think. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't seen other reactions update from this channel and others as well, check out the link in the description, check out the end cards right now, and I'll see you next time.